Let's see. Videos going. I feel like I'm behind Let's on everything here for some reason. There we go. Audio's popping soon. Come on. There you go. Instance. Yes. Overwrite, please. Okay. All right. It's official. No turning back. This is it. We can't stop it now. No, nope. we've gone too far. No, nope. there's no stopping it. Just all you what can is do is science done. Just sit and hold. Put your hands over your head and kiss your butt goodbye. The instant starts in three, two, one. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the instance episode 567. It is August 9th, 2019. I'm Scott Johnson, joined by Garrett Weinzerl. Hello, Garrett. Hello, Scott. How you doing today? Are we the only ca guys in the world? I guess Patrick does this, but we're the only. I feel like sometimes we're the only guys in the WoW slash gaming podcast world that don't use nicknames. Everyone else has a nickname, and we just call ourselves by our names. Yeah, isn't that weird? I tried it for a short stint on Starcast, and I didn't like it. Yeah, what were you? Let's hear that. Let's well, hear we, we. I think we had this talk on like the last episode of the instance, but my original World of Warcraft main was named Saint Jimmy, which is a Green Day oh, reference. So yeah. my first guild called me Saint. Yeah. So I went by Saint. As a matter of fact, I think it's it's on here. So it's over around here somewhere. My very first BlizzCon lanyard has uh, has Saint on. It. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. My very first one says Scott Johnston because they screwed it up and didn't put. Johnston. No, well, it always ha it has your real name in case they check. They've always had your real name, but they. they also put your your character name underneath oh i see oh right yeah and i think yeah, i had a two-liner i may have had gurp yeah, under no. there now that i think about that yeah i've got i can see katie's which says wiley underneath wiley whoa like a coyote which is a reference to uh one of the two baby ewoks in return of the jedi i didn't realize those things had names they do have names this is they news have to names. Me. we we have we have the plushes they made in the 80s and sold at the park are they uh are they? Uh, do you do you do you uh, cherish them and uh, cuddle them and all that? All these years they, later, they look kind of gross because they're from the '80s, so the fur has seen better days. <laughs> well, I, you know what, you could say that about me. I'm I'm uh, from the '80s, <laughs> and my fur is a little weird since then. I I am from the I am very much from the '80s. Actually, you're literally spawned from the '80s. <laughs> literally spawned in the '80s. Yeah, I just don't have any reference. So it's funny. People always. So I was born in '69, but I don't have any memory of the '70s at all. That to to me that was just a. I don't know. I just don't. I don't remember anything. I mean, maybe a couple little things here and there, family related or something, but very few memories of that. All my memories come from like '82 through '90. Those are my memories. Yeah, my, my, my memories pick up in the early 90s. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's weird. It's weird mm -hmm. how our brains are. It's like we're, we're, they're at their most healthy and growing, yet we can't retain shit from our first 10 years. Uh, okay, apparently my memory starts to pick up in 91 because my earliest memory, like like strong memory, is going to see Hook. Oh, good Lord. And that's when it came out. Was yep. it, do you also have a, a remaining a residual strong memory that Hook was terrible? Do you have that? No, I really like it because I was very young Freaking when i saw it. it hate hook so much <laughs> i was like 20 21 and i hated it anyway i mean am i met much older than you i can't be how old you, you would have been you're significantly older than me scott <laughs> not significant it's only like 15 years or t 10 15 so how old are you 50 i just turned 50 i am 32 holy shit <laughs> it's almost 20 years all right almost I, 20 years i don't like it us. i don't like it i don't like it when I'm 80, you'll be 60. Enjoy. And we'll still be doing this show. It's okay, I, Scott. I guess so. Don't worry. I'll come visit you in the home. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everybody. It is good to have you all here. We have um, a bunch of stuff to cover today. It is, uh, we're, we're hurtling toward classic in a very real way now. And uh, we, Dude, it is like, it's here. We had the test yesterday. We got, we got name claiming coming up soon. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, before I know it, classic is going to be here. I'm frankly... They should have just put it out last Tuesday with every other damn thing. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? It was quite the patch day for Blizzard. I think maybe they're clearing the slate to make room for 
for classic is my is my expectation yeah it is it has been a week if you're like if you're like me and you like basically everything blizzard does you're you're kind of like oh boy i wish i had turned down some contract work this week yeah there's a lot of stuff to play and uh yeah. and they want us to play it but um yeah it's coming up fast we're here to talk about it let's do it all right as indicated before uh wow classic is coming blizzard put up this big primer for it uh kind of a hey get ready and uh here's what you got to do and what you should know kind of thing included everything from sort of guides on how to get started to minimum requirements for your computer before we get further uh, about that i wanted to ask you if you tried the final day test big push thing yesterday or no did you avoid that, that uh, i did not i uh, yesterday was a meeting hell mm. uh, followed by into the nexus so i had no time to get yep. in and try it but i mean i've I already been in enough of the stress test i wasn't really well i watched i watched you guys play well i, I watched part of the live show of itn and then i watched you guys play for a long long time we'll get to later how we feel about uh how do you say your name kira 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 with a q kira um yeah. we'll talk about that because i think she's awesome and i want to see what you think but don't tell me yet uh, are you uh, okay I want to, I want this to be a surprise. I have this feeling. I have a feeling about how you're going to react, but I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it yet. I just have okay. A feeling. All right. All right. Well, when we get to that, lead with how you think I feel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That seems like a really healthy way to do things in life is for me to assume how people feel and then proceed accordingly. That seems good. Planning the show while we do the show. That's Welcome right. to the instance. <laughs> Great idea. All right. Uh, yeah. So no, I didn't try that. I didn't. I didn't get into it yesterday. Um, but yeah, I love. I love the primer. I love that they lead with minimum requirements, which basically means: Does your computer turn on? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Meet the minimum requirements. Congratulations. Basically, yeah. There. So here's their minimum that they list. Although I would wonder if you could probably skirt around these if you have something very old. But Windows 7 64 bit with latest service pack. So you got to have that. Uh, which is arguably the newest thing in this list. I would agree. Yeah, because the processor. Because Scott, when was the when was the last time you even thought about the phrase Intel Core Two Duo? <laughs> I mean, it's been a, about a decade since that. Because last time better. I thought about that processor, I was playing Vanilla World of Warcraft. Yeah, it was a long time ago. They say Intel Core Duo Duo, Duo Two E sixty six hundred or the AMD Phenom X three eighty seven fifty. So old ass chips will get you through the day. Mm -hmm. um, video card, you need at least an NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GT, which was an older 512 megabyte card, or the Radeon HD 4850, uh, or the Intel HD Graphics 4000. Now, uh, here's, here's a funny thing about that. Those specs are higher than they were for actual vanilla. So I don't know what that means, except to say... Great, but that's the, the the specs were lower in in O four than that. Uh, same with memory. This says two gig of RAM. Uh, they said four gigabyte of integrated graphics, such as Intel HD graphics series. You need to have that for memory, but two gig minimum was I think you could do lower than that with Vanilla WoW, if I remember right. I don't so even remember, I was I was playing on a Toshiba satellite laptop. I do not remember the specs of that thing other than it overheated a lot. Oh my Lord. Toshiba satellite. That must've been, I mean, that had to be under these specs. There's no way it would have, it would have been, uh, I got that laptop in 2005, a year you were calling into question as to the quality of, and Oh, we'll go to bat four. You know what? Let's do that. Let's do that real year. quick. Let's do that. So I've, I made this <laughs> comment on the internet that, uh, on Twitter there that my favorite years are usually on the fives. And I loved 85, I loved 95, uh, all for different reasons. And I loved 2015. 2015 is one of my favorite years ever. Why 2005 is, you know what? I think I figured it out. Because you were right. Your, your points were good. Like if that's the year you started playing, wow, great. I started in 04, but I, I take your meaning. Uh, it was Batman Begins came out that year. That was really cool. Uh, there were lots of things to be excited about in 2005. But my wife's family all lived in Mississippi and all got like, completely hammered and near destroyed by Katrina and so I associate 05 with Katrina I think so I think that's why I don't like that year very much because we had a bunch of them come here and like stay with us and it was just like omnipresent that year that the that the hurricane wiped everybody out uh, so I don't have a huge I don't have a lot of big feelings uh, for that year but you gave some fine strong arguments in 200 uh, yeah I mean it was it was like 
one of the best years for music, yeah. uh, a pretty damn great year for movies. We got Batman Begins that year. We got Sin City. We got the good prequel of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. The only one. Uh, and it's not that great yeah. by itself. Yeah. I mean, American Idiot technically came out in 2004, but it was like the tail end. So it was really like the album of 05. Yeah. Like it was fine. The radio could finally like uh, have like music that wasn't just America rah rah. That was nice in 2005. It was nice to have some uh, some counterculture making it onto the mainstream. Sure. Freaking, uh, God, there was so much good stuff in 2005. That was when uh, Gorillaz put out Demon Days. That album is nuts. Oh, that is a good album, yeah. You know, you're right, you're right. I think I just, I was covered in Katrina goo, and it and I couldn't see straight. G- Katrina was a, a huge. It was pretty downside. gnarly, man. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. yeah. Turns it out was, was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> turns out that was, was really bad. I don't want to undersell it or anything, but it was it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. Anyway, yeah, I got hit by a hurricane not that long ago, and and Katrina was way worse. Oh yeah, you live in you live in Hurricane Land. You know what this is like. Yeah, Irma came right the hell over my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that. And you were, I remember what was the deal? There was some. I remember following you, and you and we were all worried about you. Oh, I was boarding up my windows. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, I remember getting a lot of messages because I posted the video because I thought I thought people would find it interesting. I didn't I didn't even consider that people would be really concerned for my safety. But yeah. thank you, everyone. Oh, super nice of everyone. So check yeah. this out. Uh, five gig available space. You need to have five gigabytes. I think we can probably scrape that up somewhere on our hard drives. Uh, internet, you need a broadband internet connection. Although in 04, you could do it with uh, dial up because I did once. <laughs> So that's a higher spec. Um, keyboard and mouse, blah, blah, blah. Resolution, you need 1024 by 768 minimum display resolution. So I think you're yeah, all... Yeah, I think this is... It's really the widescreen, I think, that's kind of driving <laughs> up the minimum requirements here because a lot of us didn't have a widescreen back when we were playing. Oh, all. good point. Yeah, they didn't have to drive HD displays back then, which is, by the way, Ooh. there's more to that than just, here, I'm sending video to you. Like, those displays need more power from your card like it's a different animal yeah, so God. i wish i could remember how much ram but i distinctly remember going out with katie mm. who i'm now married to yeah to get more ram for her computer which definitely had a four by three display at the time so that she could play guild wars this was before we played wow oh okay guild wars and then eventually we we ended up in world of warcraft guild wars one baby that game was cool yeah that game was cool i liked it was. Uh, I was the worst possible mix of classes. <laughs> Why? What? What? what I was you... an elementalist warrior because I thought they looked cool. Uh, <laughs> turns out I should have went warrior elementalist because uh, then you had had the armor to actually survive having melee spells. It was an odd game. It's basically it was bad. It I was, made a bad choice. It's basically a uh, like what do you call it? A, um, a you you would sit in a room basically, and then you'd you'd match with other players, and then you'd go out and kind of do almost like a Diablo kind of thing. It it was like the uh, Diablo MMO really was yeah, the, it was the very uh, odd. Uh, I mean, I mean if if uh, I don't think you ever did you ever play Fantasy Star because it was also a lot like Fantasy Star. I did. I played Fantasy Star on the Dreamcast, I believe, um, and it reminded yeah. me of that. Yeah, because you got kind of a hub hub world or hub space, mm-hmm. and then you would just all run out and do your shit and then come back. Whereas Guild Wars Two is like a you know full blown MMO experience. Guild Wars Two is it's good. It is yeah, good. It's, it's, it is good. It's great. I think it gets I had more uh, time. It gets a short shrift these days because I think there's a lot of shiny going on with not only WoW but you know the resurgence of Final Fantasy fourteen and its popularity and uh, ESO and others have done well and they're I don't know if kind of overshadows it bums me out because I think Guild Wars two is actually a pretty fine a fine MMO. Uh, who'd have, who'd like have it. thought it would take us getting to 2019 until they were like legitimate contenders for WoW quality? Isn't that crazy? I never thought it would happen. I just kind of gave up on it. In fact, if anything, I would ask. I would argue, Final Fantasy is actually challenging WoW now in a way that I would have never predicted. And I don't know what the numbers are, so I can't speak to that. But I can speak anecdotally about a ton of my friends who are just freaking chest deep into that game and loving oh, it, yeah, totally. and claiming this new expansion is the greatest thing ever, and you know, just raving about that thing. So it's you know, I like it just because I can be a cat person. There you go. Are you a, are you playing it right now? Are you t- dabbling? I, I I dabbled. I I dipped my toe in it to see what all the hubbub was about, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This is nice. I don't have time for this." Yeah, that's the other thing is I don't have time. I mean, I want to have time, but I don't. It was this exactly my same experience with ESO last month. Of wow, this is really cool. Yeah, I don't have time for this. This is all true. 
Uh, for the Mac p folks out there, and there are plenty of them who played the original WoW, you need Mac OS 10.12, uh, which is, I think, the latest version. Yeah, we're at 10.12 we're at now. So they want you on the on the hot new thing. You need at least a core i5, 2 gigahertz or better, which is ironic because I don't think 10.12 runs on a machine that would have those old parts. So kind of a weird, <laughs> weird thing. Uh, you need a metal-capable <laughs> GPU with 1 gigabyte of VRAM. Again, metal-capable came way later after an i5, a uh, core i5, I think. I may have this wrong in my head, but anyway, 2 gigabytes of RAM, broadband internet connection, keyboard and mouse, 1024 by 768, kind of similar stuff there. So that's your basics. If you've got hardware that'll handle that, you're good for classic. My guess is anyone who cares is well way beyond these capabilities, and this is not even going to matter to them. And so we have probably already spent too much time on it. <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there is doing like an honest to God, like old school build yeah. just to say that they did. Yeah. Yeah. This is all true. Uh, they also added realm types. They're going to have a normal realm, which is kind of what I always played on PVP realm, RP realms. And uh, this is a late breaking addition, RP PVP realms. Uh, at least one. They're going to add one for role players who prefer the rule set of PvP realms, expecting contact, combat rather in contested areas and shared questing zones. So look forward to that fight if you are into it. I seem to remember a few people I knew back in the day who loved that uh, that combination. Of I mean, if you're play. gonna yell for people to come back you up as you're getting ganked, mm -hmm. it, it is kind of cool to do it in character, yeah, and in the universe. Ezekiel, to me, they would yell. Or uh, if you're, you know, if you're playing Alliance, you have to come up with like in-universe uh, vaguely racist remarks for orcs, and if you're playing Horde, you have to come up with in-universe vaguely racist remarks for humans. Right. Yeah, this is doing classic right the way you've described it. Uh, for the Alliance, the uh, this is the thing I think people have forgotten about. <clears throat> Don't forget the separation of Paladin and Shaman is in full effect here. So if you are Alliance, you can roll a Paladin. If you are Horde, you can roll a Shaman, but not the opposite. Horde do not have Paladins, and Alliance have no access to Shaman. Uh, not yet. That would come much later in the game. Uh, let's see. If you are a, a Dwarf... You get to be Hunter, Paladin, Priest, Rogue, Warrior. Gnomes get to be Mage, Rogue, Warlock, or Warrior. Humans get to be uh, most everything. Uh, Mage, Paladin, Priest, Rogue, Warlock, and Warrior. And Night Elves, somewhat limited, get Druid. Oh, that's what it was. Druids, not Paladins. Or no, wait a minute. No, we had no, Druids Paladin, on the other side. Paladin is the Alliance-specific Right, class. right, right. Because Druids were on both sides. I forgot about the Torn Druids. Anyway, Night Elf, Druid, Hunter, Priest, Rogue, Warrior. If you're on Horde... You got kind of the same layout, except in the case of orcs, you can be a shaman instead of a uh, paladin. And uh, druids go to the torrens. Trolls get the most, which I had forgotten about. They get they get hunter, mage, priest, rogue, shaman, and warrior. And but not their own starting area, <laughs> which kind of cracks me up. It's like, hey, what if the trolls could be everything? But they start where the orcs do. That'd be great. At least uh, until what? When did that happen? Cataclysm, they got yeah, it? Trolls get everything except a home. Except a home they can call their own. <laughs> uh, the undead get to be mage, priest, rogue, warlock, and warrior. So there's your breakdown of uh, class types. And if all those sound familiar, it's because that's exactly what you could do in vanilla. Uh, starting locations. Gnomes were so limited in classic. I know, right? And torrents, for that matter. Like uh, rogues, uh, gnomes and torrents got the short end of the stick in both cases. They just did not. Torrents to seems right to me. Night elves seem like they have more classes than I remember because I thought night elves and torn were like tied for the limited classes because I thought whatever I had it in my mind that whatever races had druids, they mm -hmm. were the ones that got like limited class options. But no, no, night elves actually have one more class option than gnomes. Yeah, which is crazy. But not not how my brain remembered it. Night elves are tied with undead and orcs for for class options. Well, I never liked those little bastards, so um, I'm happy to hear that they're going back to their their crappy situation and not having very many classes to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my 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 issue with uh, with this is uh, I don't want to play a warlock, but I got to be a night elf because I played a night elf in vanilla. Yeah, and I can't. Now you can't that, be a so. yeah, I can't be a warlock. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. What will you choose then? If you're going to be a night elf, what are you going to do here? What are you going to choose? I'm, I'm really leaning towards Rogue, but I'm also thinking I may want to punish myself and level a warrior. Oh, Lord. I mean, the mm, I would probably go Druid because those that first iteration of Druid is pretty wacky. 
I think I would do that if I was going night elf. But I was all yeah. horde in the early days, so I I feel like I'd be I have to do what I started with, right? I feel like, or at least I. I hmm. That's what yeah, I have. Unless been. you know, unless you want to play with me. I mean, you, <laughs> come on over, come on over, man. I just have this nostalgia for what I played, and I don't. I mean, I'm here's what I I still believe pretty strongly that I'm going to get in, and I'm actually going to go. Ugh, I don't want to do this again. I still kind of feel that way. However, you're going to feel that way until, you know, we're all playing and you play with us and we're the, all having fun. And that's you're my, like, and that's my point. Blast. That's exactly my point. I probably should do something on the Alliance side with, uh, with other friends and co-hosts and actually, you know, have some fun that way. Like that should be the way I do this because in 03, when I was playing the alpha and beta, and then even at launch, I was on my own. Like that was just, that was like the whole point of the game for me was, oh, finally an MMO I can play by myself, <laughs> which seems counterintuitive. <laughs> but at the time, that was a huge deal. Like, it was a huge deal. You couldn't do that in Dark Age of Camelot. You couldn't do that very well in EverQuest 1, certainly. Um, it, you know, the, the uh, quest progression and sort of single-player story sort of stuff didn't exist in MMOs. And so WoW was hugely innovative in that regard, and I could play just about any character and, and do it on my own and be okay. Uh, with the exception of group quests and stuff like that. But um, because of that, it was a lot of solo experience for me in those early those early years, or probably early year, I would say, until things really started taking off. Um, so, yeah, I probably should... Uh, I want to go where the people are. I'm like, I'm like Ariel. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Uh, That's a dumb reference. I want to see, wanna see them leveling. <laughs> Slowly and grinding and taking forever. I can't afford that yep. mount. So what am I yeah, doing? Grab your dingle hopper and uh, meet me on Lightbringer. Yeah, good. Get in there, um, dude. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to it. Like, I, I think you might find yourself pleasantly surprised by how much you're enjoying. You you might end up enjoying the inaccessibility of it all. Mm, maybe. I mean, like, like, like I, I'm really looking forward to like grouping up with people to go questing and that being a thing. Yeah, and having it it's be like, a challenge. Yeah, let's yeah. let's speed through Westfall because if we did it alone, it would take forever. But at the same time, if I'm playing alone, I'm really kind of looking forward to being stuck in a zone for a while. Yeah, you remember back in the day, it's like, where are you at? Oh, I'm in Westfall. I'm gonna be here for like a week. Yeah, I'll see you guys in a month. I'm in freaking. <laughs> it's also because I didn't really forest. know how to play. Like, I'm sure I'm gonna burn through it quicker than I did before. But but it's you're um, right though. Like I remember playing an undead mage and getting stuck forever in Silver Pine Forest because you just that's where you got stuck. And it just seemed like it took forever, and I was dying a lot, and I was repairing a lot, and I had all these issues in that place. And when I finally get out of it, it felt like this huge, you know, achievement that I got through that stuff. I guess that feeling is going to return. We haven't had that in a while. In a lot of ways, WoW has become, I don't know, watching Classic Evolve has reminded me anyway that WoW has become a bit of a theme park, kind of. Uh, the rides are great, yeah. but there's no, you were never in any danger to keep your hands in at all times that you're strapped down. You're OSHA approved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there was never, you're never in any danger to die in current day. Wow. Not really. Unless you did something dumb and, you know, pulled a huge mob thing or something, you know, whatever. Except when I go right, except instead of left and that one fork in, uh, in Najatar and then I die by getting jumped by 20 Naga. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to the the slow pace. I think I finally understand that criticism though, because for years people would say, "Oh, wow, it's just gotten too," you know, they just it's there's no challenge there. It's just you're you're just on the you know you're on the loot grind and you're doing character progression and those are the hooks, but you're not really being challenged. And and maybe that's what the game needed to evolve through to to continue to be good because i remember people complaining about how hard things were and now they all want it back so whatever players are fickle and now we're in nostalgia town and that's a weird town um so i'm not i'm not going to side entirely with that but i kind of st i'm starting to understand what they mean you know like it was harder it was a challenge wow in its current state is not about that outside of you know mythic right they, they put in challenges but they were but but it's no longer in the base game it's no longer in the uh, the front facing every moment kind of player on world kind of way it's all relegated to mythic level dungeon runs and mythic level rating and stuff like that anyway yeah yeah i mean i mean there's just been so much conversation about just this leveling experience and talking about the level switch and all of that and i think a lot of that comes from this realization that not everything 
in classic and BC or whatever, however far back you want to go, was necessarily bad. Yeah, there were some points to it. There was some that that some of the clunk actually was at the heart of a bit of the fun. Yeah, I agree. Clunk and fun sometimes they go together. Turns out, uh, Stormwind do. City and Orgrimmar are your starting in capital cities. We are no longer uh, adding a new city. You're starting in the basics, and they are pre. Uh, visual changes, so looking forward to some really shitty architecture. <laughs> and again, I mean, have you been the sermon lately? It, like those buildings still look pretty jank. They look pretty it's bad. Just, yeah, it's just bigger. They've never. I remember in 04 thinking the the alliance buildings and like the white brick tower stuff looked bad. It looked bad then, so it never looks good to me. <laughs> Like the only time uh, it looks Iron good Forge is looked cinematic. amazing though back in the day. Iron like Forge the first was time a... I walked into Iron Forge. Yep. Oh my god! I was just like, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen. That was breathtaking. I thought that the uh, Teldrassil looked amazing. I thought, um, oh gosh, what else in vanilla? Un- Undercity blew my mind. Yeah, Undercity was crazy. I, even Orgrimmar when I came around the corner and just saw, oh my gosh, so we have this huge enclave in this canyon. Like this is insane. Like all of that stuff is 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 great i just don't know how i'm gonna feel about it when i see those things this time am i gonna walk around the corner and be oh or am i gonna go Ooh, <laughs> this place a little sparse a little ugly been, I, I i i think you can handle it better than than you think you've been role playing a lot so i think once you're in it for a, you know you're in the game for an hour you're gonna stop thinking about it that's true it's all gonna be relative to your experience so by the time you finally get you know you're done picking cactus apples mm-hmm. and you get over to organ i think you're gonna be like oh man this is cool i forgot this is rad oh my gosh you know those are still there i i uh i did a little i can't remember why i did it but i went to start a orc to do some test about early level stuff i did recently in the main game and they still have that damn quest to go get those damn cactus apples i hate those things hate it and the orcs that are sleeping jobs done those guys running around f those guys i love beating the peons uh i don't know man that first cave it's rough. That area is still rough. Anyway, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm back and forth on this thing. But check this out. Ability, weapons, and spells, and talents. That's all coming back now. If you don't remember, you used to do ranks. That's how this worked. You would level up and gain new ranks to things. So, for example, if you had Ancestral Spirit and you leveled to level 4, I think it was, you would get Ancestral Spirit rank 2. Um, this was true for most of the classes and most of their abilities and their spells. So, get used to that. But also... Uh, a reminder that when you did that, you would go to a trainer and you would pay them money uh, to get to those ranks. So you didn't just level and go, bing, you automatically have a new ability. You would go, bing, shit, I, can, I, I don't have 500 gold or whatever it was. It was lower than that. Uh, but it's more like I don't have four gold. Uh, you, That's how you did it. You paid your way to success. And uh, respecting costed a bunch of money and uh, the talent tree was a stack of icons that's very reminiscent of something like um oh what's this like it's a little like uh what was the what was the game where you um for a hot minute everyone thought it was going to be great it's a short word shit try on worlds made it um what? Try, <laughs> it's, it's like it, it, i have no idea rift what rift about. freaking rift oh ri- well Rift came after Classic WoW, so it's like Vanilla WoW. That's it, what these talent it, it really trees are is. like. It is Vanilla WoW talent tree. It really is. If I were, if you guys are looking for Vanilla but don't want to play WoW again, Rift is basically Vanilla uh, Vanilla WoW. I don't know if, how much I of that game I bought Rift is. solely because you talked about it on this show many years ago. <laughs> Oops. I mean, no, it's cool. There was nothing wrong with it. Was Rift a fun is game fine. At the time. Yeah, Rift is fine. Yeah. It's still going. It's still a thing. People like Rift. And then uh, then WoW went, you know what? We'll just add uh, random spawned world events into our game, and you'll never want to go back to Rift, Garrett. And I yeah. said, oh, turns out you were correct. Smoke1973 in the chat says, LOL, does Scott really like WoW in any form? Of course I do. I like it in lots of forms. My favorite times in WoW include the uh, very beginning. Loved it then. Loved it in Wrath of the Lich King absolutely loved it to me that was high point high level were you were you not a bc fan because i I thought burning crusade i have very very fond memories about i don't know why i don't think of bc as strong or as as fondly i don't i don't know why i feel that way about bc i think bc was great obviously but i don't uh i I started i didn't raid until i got to bc so i'm like my first raid was karazhan and 
Well, right. technically it was Mac Theronin's lair, but the first one I like really we like worked on as a progression thing was Karazhan. Yeah, and I loved Cataclysm uh, it, uh, more than other people. A lot of people hated Cataclysm. I was not one of those people. I enjoyed that expansion and played it a ton and got... It full. came together in the end. I, I did really disliked the... I fell off uh, during everything up until the... I came back right at the end during uh, the Deathwing raid. Yeah, the Deathwing raid was awesome. I loved that. I, that was I, a very good raid, yeah. yeah. That was a high point for I sure. I got full um, gear sets out of that. I felt really good about my time in there. And I am legitimately mad I missed Firelance because oh, my, my raid team continued on without me. And, and apparently it was a very good raid, but I never did it when it was current. I've done it. I did it when it was current and hard. And then I did it a little later when it was a little easier and we could run it fast. And then I did it once on my own. Uh, this is not long ago. I just went and did it for fun and uh, soloed that whole damn thing. And then Legion, or I'm sorry, Pandaria is one of my favorite settings the game ever had. Like in terms of endgame and stuff, I wasn't as into it, but I loved, loved my time. My, like my leveling, my 10 level experience in that, in that expansion, maybe my favorite. I loved Pandaria. And uh, still just think so fondly of it. And I think Legion's amazing. So so there you go, guys. Smoke. <laughs> Smoke 1973. I There are plenty of things in WoW. And right, you know what? The beginning of this expansion I really enjoyed. It really petered out for me toward the, well, where we are now. But but there's, the level, there's always is, something to like. There's always something. The there. leveling is very good in this expansion. I yeah. mean, the zones, the, the two continents in BFA are, are freaking incredible. Yeah. And if I'm honest, that's kind of my... That's where m most of my love of Warcraft is, is the leveling and the story and that progression part of the game. Endgame has never been my strong suit. It's not the thing I have the most interest in. I dip in and dip out, but I always love the the initial stuff, always, almost almost without exception. In fact, I think I liked it just fine in, in uh, Warlords. There was some cool stuff going on there. It's just when they get to that, you know, tip of that spear and then they're like all right now we're gonna time gate everything and, and things get weird and then i'm not as into it but i guess i always love wow when it's like that and all whatever this new expansion is i will love it for that uh it's gonna be weird though dude because we are gonna live in a post classic world when a new expansion comes out for for wow prime and i don't know what that means like do players what do players do do they care I, the, is classic I'm, gonna be too good like what do you think about that <laughs> Um, I, th I, I think it, you're going to have a mix uh, is the only realistic answer, I think. I think you're going to have your hardcore classic players. You're going to have your hardcore live players, and you're going to have people like me who I'm pretty damn sure I'm going to go between the two. Right. I, I mean, that's what I expect, but I don't know. It's just going to be weird. Two versions of WoW running simultaneously in the same launcher. That's just weird. But we're I mean, it, if classic is what – blizzard if, if blizzard chalks classic up to a success it's going to be nothing but a good thing and they can start purposefully uh timing updates to both mm -hmm. uh and offset them yep there it is so we have a classic update in between a lull for updates for live would be wonderful and i hope that's what they do uh remember weapon skills remember having to pay for those and level those up Oh, yeah, I remember distinctly heading out into the jungle, unequipping my stuff just so I could level up my unarmed for when I got disarmed in PvP. Yep, that was a thing. It's now a thing Did again. Did disarmed in PvP? Honestly, don't, I don't remember if that was a thing in vanilla. <laughs> I don't know. There was a reason I needed to level up my disarm, my unarmed at some point. I can't remember either, but bows, crossbows, daggers, guns, one-handed axes, one-handed maces, one-handed swords, pole arms, staves, swords, thrown weapons, two-handed axes, two-handed maces, two-handed swords and unarmed Everything. and wands all of it that matter. oh my god wands oh yeah wands remember oh, i do i remember <laughs> i See? remember there's a lot to get there's a lot of stuff we're just like oh shit right that, that was a thing yep um let's see uh professions that oh yeah that's all coming back and it's i never did it anyway so i don't care about that uh grouping and looting here's a fun reminder here's how this worked all right so you got to go to the stones there is no port somebody in. There's no, uh, you know, automated way of doing this. LFR, uh, LFG, all that stuff's gone. So yep, you're yep. Gonna, you better trust your party leader. Yeah, is that's, really the TLDR on this. Yep. And here is his rule. Here are the rules the party leader will have in regards to loot. Master loot. The party leader determine who gets the loot. He can do round robin. Each each member of the party loots in turn. So you had to set that. And if I remember right, the default was master loot. And to get round robin, what would usually happen is you'd kill the first wave of trash. I don't remember what the default was. 
Well, I, I I always remember getting the first wave of trash, and then and then the leader going, "Oh shit, it's still on master. Hold on," and then he would change it to Rand Robin. That always happened. Was, I thought I think group wasn't group default. I think group was default. Uh, group is the party members can roll on powerful items. That may have been default. Yeah, but I'm for, pretty sure group loot was was default. But for like a uh, five man dungeon, that sucked because you you just wanted a Rand Robin it because the stuff that was dropping was you know or or well I can't remember now though if you. Didn't get to roll. Oh, it was need before greed. That's what it was. Only party yeah. members can use. That's the thing they always had to switch it to. That's what it was in those fights. But okay. if you, but if you're out, if you're out, if you're out in the world just doing quest trash and stuff, you wanted it on round robin. That's what you wanted. Because every other yeah. get the money. Yeah, um, but but a party leader could change it to whatever they wanted it to be. So that's why you really need to uh, <laughs> trust your party leader. Yeah, be a good party leader. Also trust the guy you got. Free for all was another option that I hated. Anyone can loot anything that was chaos and dumb, and it shouldn't have been there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whatever. That's the most realistic, I suppose. Uh, for WoW Classic, the raids you're going to get are Strathholm and Molten Core. Now, we all remember well, that. Uh, Strathholm is a dungeon, but. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. That is a dungeon, but Molten Core is your raid. Yeah. Now, do you remember the Molten Core Warlords redo thing that we all played? Do you remember that? Oh yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, I don't want to go near that place ever again. <laughs> I want to do it when it's at level current. Like I want to do it in classic. I have no interest in revisiting it in the live game. I just don't know, man. That thing is rough, and all those attunements—that's a thing again. So if you want to run molten core, you got to get molten core attunement. If I remember correctly, attunement. Oh yes, dude, dude. Of course, you yeah. got to get your core fragment. Yeah, and attunement didn't get really nutty. I don't think until Karazhan. That got real dumb. I hated that. Uh, I loved the Karazhan attunement because you had to go through all the dungeons to get the keys at the end, and and I loved running dungeons. And so, like, because the Karazhan attunement was locked behind the dungeon, there was just dungeon runs happening all the time. It was very easy to find groups. Yeah, I. Um, uh... I, I got I got Karazhan attunement while I was on vacation in the Keys. <laughs> I was on my Toshiba satellite. Oh my gosh! In uh, with the uh, on the hotel, uh, like the Ethernet coming out of the wall. Yeah. And I uh, I killed Mur we we defeated Murmur and I got the final the last key I needed for Karazhan. Nice, uh, well done on that. <laughs> I don't know. It's starting yeah, to no, sound dude, like a I loved uh, I loved attunement. I liked attunement a lot because it was like this 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 joint project that like especially if you got in sync with a friend and you worked on attunement together it was this thing you kept coming back to and working on over time i, I liked attunements i thought they were fun mm. i think it's way more fun than just the endless rep grind of current end game well yeah i'm current end game there's no i don't know there there is something to there is something to be said for working getting yourself prepared for the content right and not just going to the content because it's time um, and I, I do like that in theory, but I remember hating attunements at the time. I may feel different now. We'll see. I mean, all yeah, of this is I, still I like better. I, this is all I mean, better at the than time. Me. Yeah, I never hit max level uh, during uh, during vanilla. Um, oh, right. So that it, came wasn't, in... it wasn't a thing for me. So Karazhan was like my first real attunement. So uh, you hit 70 in uh, BC. Or is it 70? Yeah, 70, right? Yeah, I think we've had this discussion before. I didn't know I could like get like up the talent levels on my pet so didn't keep aggro at all like i was a horrible hunter in vanilla world of warcraft i'm 42 was i think as high as i made it in vanilla yeah lawn makes in the chat says uh attunements suck for casual players oh yeah yeah like uh, if you're a super casual player of world of warcraft and you're getting and you're super stoked for classic i oh, mean i got some bad news for you on the casual front it's not going to be casual you're going to be uh, that's the other thing i worry about here i don't have the time that I used to have, and even then, I didn't really have the time. Like, do I have time to go that hard and that far? I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I won't max level in vanilla again. <laughs> if you don't like Nagitar, you've got the time. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Um, it's all right. Person, again, it's a, it's a personal thing. I don't, it, it depends on what you want from the game. Yeah. Because because if you're casual and you like leveling, I've got great news for you. Classic is all about the leveling. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. If you're casual and you want to do end game, okay, yeah, you're in trouble. That is but all true. It depends on what you want out of the game. Uh, looking forward to August 27th. That's the day, global release. Uh, and, well, it's on a schedule, but you know where you live and you know when you're getting it. Um, they have a whole page up for it now. It looks really nice if you haven't seen it. 
uh, got all these guides up there and some forums and yep. shop stuff and all that. So go check it out. All right. Um, what else? I mentioned the PVP, RV, uh, uh, PVP, RP, PVP yep. realm. Are, are, are you ready to reserve your name? No, um, <laughs> I'm not because I don't know where I'm going to be on the 12th because I'm supposed to perform a wedding that day. And now I'm concerned about where I'm going to be. Uh, so assuming <laughs> I'm not around, I may not be able to secure GURP or, uh, Vorpine or these th three or four other names that I have fond feelings for. Roy, I'd love to get Roy again. I don't think it's going to happen, uh, but I'll try. Are you going to stick around and be there on 3 p.m. PDT? What is that, 6 p.m. your time? I'm going to certainly try, yeah. yeah. It'd be 6, 6 p.m. for me. So, yeah, no, Katie and I are going to sit around and try and get our old school night elf names. Nice. Uh, it says character name reservation for Wild Classic opens next week. This is Monday, August 12th. At that time, we mentioned 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Players with an active subscription or game time on their World of Warcraft account be able to create up to three characters per WoW account and have the names reserved before Classic releases worldwide on Monday, uh, the 26th. We will release details regarding realm names and realm types later this week so you can coordinate with your friends on where to begin your adventure. If there are high numbers of players congregating in individual realms during the name reservation character creation process, we will post warnings about the potential for long queues on those realms, giving you time to choose alternate realms if you want to. Also, please note character creation will be limited to only one faction per realm on PvP realms. Uh, was that true before? Or is that just because of yes? This? Okay, one hundred percent true. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, it's just a thing that you need to be reminded of because that's no longer the case. Here are the limitations. Maximum of 10 characters per classic realm. Maximum of 50 characters across all classic realms in your region. Uh, only one faction per realm on PvP realms. And also there are no overlap character limits with World of Warcraft. So if you have 50 characters in Battle for Azeroth, you can have another 50 in classic. They're separate. So that one does not ding the other pool. Uh, I'll be curious to see if you get your stuff, dude. Saint, whatever your name is, the Saint Saint Croy. What's your name? What's the nickname you like? <laughs> Saint Bath. What is it? What did you say it was? Uh, Saint Jimmy. It's Saint a song. Jimmy. American idiot. That's right. You're gonna get Saint Jimmy uh, all locked down <laughs> on uh, on Monday, and I'm uh, I'll be excited to hear if you get that or not. All right. Have you watched any of this uh, freak out and drama about? The alabaster mounts, the 15 year anniversary stuff, and how pissed people are. Well, I have eyes that function, and I have a Twitter account, so yes. <laughs> all right, me too. That's how I saw it. Um, everyone's all flipping out. So these are these alabaster mounts that are like, uh, they look like stone. Um, to me, they seem like untextured <laughs> mounts, but they, whatever. They look like butt, if you ask me. Yeah, I don't love them. <laughs> I, think these things, I think these mounts are hideous. Uh, that's part of the problem. Not only are they just not all that amazing, I mean, they're okay, but the big complaint is that they're 25 bucks in the store and Blizzard's saying, hey, let's celebra celebrate 15 years together. And one would assume many people have paid a monthly fee of $15 a month and have been here the entire 15 years. And the reward is a thing you got to buy. Um, that's the big complaint. And they are basing that a little bit on some, you know, I think there's some something to this, like in the five-year anniversary and the 10-year anniversary and other anniversaries, they've had stuff to give you, and they gave it to you. They didn't say, here, go to the store and spend 25 bucks. So people are pissed. Um, they're still giving us a lot of things. I agree. It I don't know why the hit yet. I just don't know why it's, the freak out about the mounts. Like there's there's gonna be a 15 year anniversary in game event as part of 8.2.5. There's a dope ass looking Deathwing mount. There's a pet you can get. Like Is it because it's because they're not just gonna hand it to you? You gotta like that Deathwing mount, you gotta go earn it. Like, you got to get the achievements, kill the bosses, do the stuff, or you're not going to get it. Is that why, if you were to guess, is that why people are pissed? Because this isn't just a handover, here you go, here's a, here's a gift sort of thing? I mean, I think people are pissed because this is the world we live in. <laughs> I think because certain people on YouTube are telling them to be pissed. Uh, <laughs> we won't get into names, but some people like to tell people to be pissed. Uh, certain people have built entire brands around making people angry. Mm-hmm yeah um there's a little yeah I, I don't I, like like here's the thing like don't buy it <laughs> <laughs> yes uh vote with your wallet here it's a good idea i recommend that frankly i'm glad that they look like butt because <laughs> if they look good <laughs> and i wanted to buy them then i'd be angry 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, that's a you know what? That's a good takeaway. I don't like them either. That's like the last storm now. Whatever that yeah. flying dragon thing they added to the game that yeah. that was the last thing everyone was mad about. That that I've, I've got news <laughs> good news for you too. That mount is ugly as hell. Yeah, so I think that was cool, a good great. It's, it looks bad. I don't want to. I don't have to. Or at least I don't want to spend my twenty five dollars because I think the mounts are ugly. They've had some though that have been really awesome, and then then I get mad because I don't really want to spend the money on it, but then I do it anyway. They, they, they have, they have. But how many times on the show, dude, do we have to sit here and go, we don't agree with store mounts, but also we don't care that much because that's like that's like just stamp it. We need to make a stamp. Boom, there it is. That's our read on the mounts. Moving on. Yeah, I was having like a. I'll just have a sound clip that'll play. That'll say, we don't like store mounts, but we don't really care, and I'll just play it every time we need to up. record it like legalese at the end of a of like a drug commercial uh <laughs> super like, fast so like, we can blah, 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 blah. we can go people are mad about alabaster mounts moving on yeah here at the instance we do not agree with store mounts we think you shouldn't actually have to pay for mounts but we also don't really care that much <laughs> all right well i'm actually gonna go isolate what you just said because i think it was perfect so i'm now marking that in the show and i'm gonna go get it later <laughs> uh yeah it's just yeah. I'm, I know. Just how many how many times can we get outraged about the same thing? I know. It's it's tiring. It's exhausting. Actually, just outrage in general right now has got me kind of exhausted. Yeah, I'm with Rusty Nails in the chat room. We'll get Taliesin to record it when he finally comes and guests on the show. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but this is my favorite thing about watching TNE's stuff is is every time Storm Out Controversy, Taliesin has to say, I don't agree with it, but I have to cover the outrage. Yeah, let's I, 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 get you in trouble, too. Baton 2216. I'm not answering that question. What are you trying to do here? <laughs> what kind of dirty you kicking up, buddy? What kind of what kind of fart in church are you making there, buddy? All right. Uh, eh, what else? The new goblins and Morgans. We didn't we didn't have a show last week, so we haven't had a chance to talk about this. Uh, they look great. Um, if you are a goblin or worgen, the new goblin stuff looks great. The worgen stuff looks great. In fact, the worgen stuff in particular uh, probably needed the most work, and I think they killed it. They look great. Um, I don't know what the difference is. I don't know why they didn't look great before, but they always looked a little weird. I think they look amazing now, and so do the goblins. If you haven't seen these updates, you should go look at them because they're... Ready. Well, the, the, the worgen and the goblins, you know, they came in at Cataclysm, so they've always looked better mm -hmm. than the classic models, yeah. but uh, these are definitely a, a major uptick in, in quality for sure. I mean, it's just the quality of the texture, like the, the paintings and whatnot. Like, yeah. I've always... Ever since we've gotten the new the new racial models, like it's just really been blowing my mind because I love me my Warcraft art books, and we finally got to the point where these textures they look like the art mm -hmm. that come out of the books. Yeah, they've done they've done real well that way. But I got good news for those who hate worgens and hate goblins. Uh, they're not in classic, so you can go play classic. They're not <laughs> How can you hate worgens and goblins? Well, you know, some people. I don't know. I don't know. Because maybe they represent something to somebody. I like Worgens and Goblins. I'm not going to complain. I, I think the 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 one that got the biggest upgrade here is the female Worgen model. There's just I can't quite put my finger on it, but the faces just look so much better. Yeah, I she she got the most improvement. I'll agree with that. The the Goblins already I think looked okay, but the these these are you know these look better. These are refined. Um, there's a yeah. great I have a great old clip about Worgens and Goblins, but. The girl called them Wargens. What was it called? Crap. I don't know where this is. Is it Cataclysm? Maybe that was it. Cataclysm. Oh, yeah. Here it is. So this is back when they announced Catac... Or, uh... Here. Cataclysm. Hey, guys. This is Rachel. Surely you can't be serious. I'm sorry, what? Cataclysm. And then she does a Worgen thing. Hey, guys. You are so dumb. Wait for it. Wait for it. really dumb. Oh. Oh, she takes forever to get to it. The and the there it is, the Wargen and the Goblins. So there you go. Cataclysm and Wargens uh, and Goblins. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when I'm on this show, I'm just reminded how long I've listened to this show before being on it and realizing that my friends and I would only refer to the expansion as a, as Cataclysm as a result of clips like that on this podcast. Right, that thing memed out pretty hard at the time. <laughs> there was a lot of people calling it that. I feel bad for that girl because she kind of got lumped on, but uh, but yeah, we're, <laughs> we were here to help spread the problem. Um, <laughs> way, way, to, way to be a force for change. <laughs> uh, 
It's one uh, way to look at it. Anyway, uh, so let's see. That's it. That's pretty much up where we're at with WoW right now. The 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 current game, the main game. I mean, stuff going on. Mostly, just you know, people are in either enjoying or not enjoying eight point two and cranking through it. And that's about all there is to it uh, right now. Classic's kind of the hot thing on everyone's mind. So. Not much you can do about that. I, I am think. Uh, trying to catch up on my rep to get flying since I was gone for a week and a half, and it is Arduous. taking forever. Yeah, I haven't had the it's taking. Haven't had the gumption yet. Absolute ever. I haven't had the gumption yet. I'll get around to it, but I just have not. I just can't make myself do it. It's been too. I'm so other. done with it. Just give us flying when the damn patch drops. I'm so I'm so over grinding rep to get my freaking flying. I know it doesn't. doesn't there is really nothing I hate add. more in modern World of Warcraft. And even for those people that go, just play the game, you should already be there. No, there's plenty they add. It's all fine if you got nothing to do with your life. But man, I say this, but I'm about to enter the classic realm where everything takes forever. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm contradicting myself here. We'll see how it goes. I have real concerns. Let's put it that way. Check this out. All right, that music means this. We're going to talk about what else is going on around Blizzard. Um, now, Overwatch, there's nothing going on, but there is something happening in the industry that I think may, we may see something happen with Overwatch, possibly Heroes of the Storm as a result. And that is this. A bunch of stuff went down. Uh, in, one, in, uh, in particular, uh, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo on the, con on the console front got out ahead of loot boxes and said, we're going to start publishing uh, the percentages of win and what you're going to win information or what you could win information with loot boxes. So anytime they have loot box stuff happen, they're going to tell you what your chances are to win. This is already a thing you have to do in China for certain games. Um, in fact, I think even Overwatch has to do that in China, if I remember right. Uh, overall, though, loot boxes are kind of... Nobody wants to do them anymore. Everyone talks kind of negatively about them. And uh, over, or, um, excuse me, Rocket League this week announced they're dumping them. Done. No more loot boxes. They're out. And I have a theory... That that's gonna that's gonna be a trend, and Overwatch and Heroes of the Storm and a, a games out there that all use loot boxes. I think their days are numbered. I think they're getting rid of them. I think it's gonna be battle passes uh, or stuff similar to that moving forward, which I think is a much more consumer friendly uh, solution to what uh, people need to do to make a longer tail of their game and make more money down the road. So just a prediction: Overwatch gonna lose their boxes. Garrett, counterpoint. Uh, unless, I just have no skin in this game. Unless you agree. You probably agree, right? Maybe, sort of. Uh, I don't think they're going to lose their boxes. Mm. Uh, I hope they do. I, I hate know. them. I hate them. Don't you hate them? I hate them. Loot boxes oh, are Oh, I do hate them, but I also don't really play the game. Right, so. but if... Okay, let's Doesn't... go to... Let's talk Heroes of the Storm for a second. If they got rid of loot boxes, loot chests, whatever they're calling them, and went with some sort of battle pass, you'd do that in a heartbeat, right? I would. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like... That would be the perfect game for it. They should totally do that. I know they, you know, have their development on that team, but I still think they should do that. Uh, Hearthstone, what's going on? Bunch of card reveals. Everyone open their packs. Anything exciting to say there about the expansion and all that? You're enjoying yourself? Um, yeah, it seems to be a, a decent mix of things not changing enough, but they're also being noteworthy new archetypes breaking out. Um, I was very wrong about Paladin. I thought they were going to be just hot freaking shit. <laughs> and uh, they've got arguably the best aggro deck in the entire game right now with Murloc Paladin. Wow. That's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was also wrong with Warrior. I thought we were just going to continue playing bombs, which some people are doing. But there's also a really good new control warrior that's playing the new taunt package. And I thought we were just going to like be like, oh, these taunt cards are cool, but there's no reason to do anything different because Warrior is still very good. But oh, that's awesome. there's... There's a control warrior running the taunt package, and it's really, really good if you want to climb ladder. That's Albeit ironic. Probably you know, slowly. When I was in high school, my wrestling name was Taunt Package for a while. Oh, Taunt Package. Okay. Yeah, I had some. I had. I had a real reputation for some stuff. I don't want to get into details, but watch out for Taunt Package. Is all I would say. Uh, well, that's awesome. Well done. And did you get any cards you wanted? Like 100 percent. Like great. You've got all sets, all cards, every, everything. Uh, ever no, won. I had a horrible pack opening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I like hit hit like the exact average uh, 
of of legendaries and as usual jocelyn just like made out like a bandit why did she do that how did she figure that out uh she's just the luckiest uh, son of a gun i've ever met in a game with complete random luck and opening card packs yeah i mean that's one pl- by the way that's one place you will not see randomization go away although i could see a i could see a scenario where if government pressure heats up hearthstone would have to start talking about percentages and, and things like that, but they're never going to get rid of uh, They've already packs. released them for the same reason because of Chinese uh, uh, stuff. Um, do they do it's it a here? card game, though. Like, if, if legislation started it started to affect digital card games in the U.S., do we have to, will it also affect paper card games? Because it's no different. I completely agree. Like, that's a... No one ever mentions that, but that's a thing they're going to have to contend with. And that, I mean, that goes yeah. all the way. And, that's and like and if Hearthstone you're just buying... Still, if you're buying Hearthstone baseball cards, so, right? Like, baseball cards yeah. are going to be the well, same, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I was mostly talking about Magic the Gathering, and Hearthstone is still way cheaper than Magic the Gathering if you want to try and get, like, every card in a set. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, there's tons of them, though. Pokemon. Like, anything that has a package with cards in it, are they going to make you put a little card in there that says, your chances of getting... Like, what do they even do with physical stuff? Like, yeah, that's a that's an issue. They're going to have to contend I mean, with I that. guess you could start printing the odds on the on the package itself, but... yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 a weird conversation for sure. Um, I mean, when I stop and think about it, yeah, I pl- I spend so much money on Hearthstone every year, more than any other game I play. Yeah. Uh, because of the cost to try and play most decks. Yeah. Um, I don't have to spend that much, but I'd like to try most archetypes so I can be knowledgeable on them. You've, um, you've bought but, a lot of JPEGs, is what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah but when i when i think about it you know with other card games especially physical ones like magic it's it's way more affordable yeah that's true well when the big em alien emp comes and we all lose everything digital just remember how many jpegs you bought over the years everything will be fine you'll feel good about it <laughs> here's the yeah. storm is kind of rocking it right now they got a new character came out this week her name is kira mm-hmm. uh, spelled q u i r a we talked about her at length q u q h q sorry i spelled that wrong is it q h yeah you're right q h i r a you're right i don't know why i put a u in there typo um, i don't know why i had such a strong reaction it's a fictional character so yeah i also <laughs> uh, she, yeah she's not in any other blizzard ip she's a she's an original character new to the nexus nexus born uh, the only now we have two of these, and it sounded from a recent Q and A on Reddit that they may be the last for a while. Um, they don't have anything else in the pipe right now. They do have other Blizzard characters in the pipe, um, but I like her a lot. She's really cool. She gives me kind of a Wakanda vibe. Uh, she's got this sword that uh, segments and goes super long. Reminds me of um, oh, Kratos has something like this. I think. Where... It's a bit like Kratos' chains, but the design of the sword reminds me very specifically of the sword in the first Pacific Rim that the mech has. Oh, it's this right. segmented thing that locks together. Right. There you go. That's another, yeah, that may actually be what I'm thinking of. Because every time I see her use it, I go, that reminds me of freaking something. Well, the way she plays is kind of Kratos-like. But yeah. the, if you're just looking at the design of the sword, it looks very much like uh, something out of Pacific Rim. But... I, think, I think she's a little overtuned right now. She's super powerful and fun to watch and fun to play they'll probably nerf her but she's really cool i think worth picking up and I so had, what do you think my read on kira is uh oh yeah yeah so mine is mine i've stated i think she's rad i think he, i haven't heard the latest itn and i watched only part of the stream the other day or yesterday and it wasn't the part where you talked about her so this is me completely guessing i'm guessing you don't like the in nexus born stuff and you don't and that's a bummer for you that you would prefer this was some blizzard ip character correct or not not you're correct about the overarching thought that i don't like nexus born heroes <laughs> okay you're incorrect if you think i don't like Hira because i think she has one of the best kits in the entire game now would you would you agree with me that part of what makes her innovative and rad and having one of the best kits in the game is that they are unbound by the existing character they have to work with and they can start from some scratch even start from kit and work back like that seemed like a good thing so would you like to see these continue or would you just prefer they get more creative with blizzard ip um 
I mean, they, why does Zul'jin like throw circle axes? Like that has nothing to do with Zul'jin. So I'm not sure how bound they truly are yeah. <laughs> by doing a, a blizzard, uh, an existing blizzard hero. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really care. If it's fun to play, it's fun to play. That's really it at the end of the day. Um, I personally, I think they've they've really missed the fantasy of Heroes of the Storm, which yeah. is the, the the bashing together of all of these universes. Yeah. Um, when they, like last year, when they were really getting into their, like up their own butt with their own lore, I could not have cared less about it. Yeah. Like you are missing the point. The whole the whole reason we're here is to have Rainer fight Diablo. Yeah. Like, why are we spending any time at all on the Raven Lord? Yeah. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't want this to sound like a fact though, because I know there are people that do enjoy it. Oh sure. I just disagree with those people. <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean they haven't done enough to hook me into the story to begin with. I don't have a problem with them trying to do more with it, but uh and characters are fine with that. But I I see it like almost like Overwatch heroes. They're so Johnny come lately to the Blizzard scene that when I see one of those introduced into the Nexus, I'm like, Oh, okay. They're not really Blizzard, you know, they're not I don't think of them as a classic Blizzard hero, but they're also fun to play and and, and that's enough. But I agree with yeah, you. The game, uh, the game's supposed to be Blizzard All Stars, kind of like it's supposed to be this big. It's like Smash Brothers. You don't want to go. What if there were Smash Brothers only characters that grew up, you know, inside of the fighting scene in the and like? No, we want Nintendo characters and like other game characters you made contracts with, like Snake and freaking Sonic or whoever, to come over. You don't want like, oh, this character's called. Uh, Big Billy Cheese Bucket, and he's he lives down under the castle, and now he's fighting round one. Like that's dumb, in my opinion. Yeah, again though, it's another one of these things where it's like um, it's not how I would do it, but I also don't feel so strongly about it that I think it's that important to uh, freak out about it on Reddit or whatever. Yeah, because um, the game is good, and the kit is amazing, and the hero is fun to play. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Mouse divided um, says, and, and I can get it. Like I can kind of like think about if you're on that team. Yeah. Like I'm going to defend something I don't like here. Think about you're on the Heroes of the Storm team. Yeah. You're really proud of your game. Yeah. You know, you've, you've done a lot. You've you, you, you have weathered more more crap than anyone else. You've weathered more naysayers than any other game at Blizzard because you relate to the MOBA game, and yet you still have created an amazing MOBA. Uh, and 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 you know you're still going strong even after everything that happened um you know you you probably want you want to make your own hero yeah you yeah. want to put your own stamp on it create like, i get it i get that desire yeah. creatively and, and if anyone's earned it awesome yeah yeah if anyone's earned it it's the heroes team i agree so if they want to get weird if they want to experiment if they want to put their own stamp on the blizzard universe i, I think they have more than earned it even if i would rather <laughs> have deathwing out of the game right I well, that's a whole nother conversation, but I don't know how Deathwing even works. I don't think it works. He has a hu he has a human form. Yeah, but that's boring. Nobody wants to see him walking down the lane going, "Yeah, I'm Deathwing in human form. Check me out." And then once in a while, L he listen, Scott. Just because you want to see Alex Straza walking down the lane because you like her bikini doesn't mean that you can't give <laughs> Deathwing the same treatment. No, my liking of her is that she proves she's she's actually the exception that proves the rule. She comes out and says. I'm in human form, walking down the lanes, pretty dumb. Once in a while, I can be a dragon when the cooldown's up, and I got kind of a cool alt. That is the one trick. There's nothing else to do. Like, Deathwing would just go up in the sky and rain down terror. He's never going to beat giant Deathwing. I don't know, man. He's the world breaker. You can't have him in there. He's a world breaker. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Alex Straza is actually taking the form of a high elf, not a human form. <laughs> Right now you're gonna tell. I mean, we have two dragons in the game. You got her and uh, what's her name? Chromie. The, Chromie. I couldn't think of it. You got Chromie in there, and the way they handled Chromie was we may as well just not have her be a dragon. She doesn't exist as a dragon. She exists as a gnome, and she does her thing, and it's fine. And she's great for being the mage character she is. I don't know how you'd have to do something like it's got to be more like Chromie than uh, Alexstrasza because Deathwing. <laughs> It, it, I just don't. I, like I said, it's a whole other conversation, but I don't see it. I can't see Deathwing in there. I just can't see it. Maybe. Maybe. 
Uh, somebody in the chat I wanted to mention. Oh, Mouse Divided says, I think it's weird, but I like that uh, Kira's left hand, uh, left handed. I hadn't noticed that until he just said that. So that is kind of cool. Is she? Is she? I think so. In the art, go and in win the, the check. Nothing wrong with a left handy. Uh, so in the art, she's right handed. In the screenshots, she's left handed. So yeah. in the game itself, right. And the art could be f flipped. Just yeah, but I'm seeing the same piece over and 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 over, over, over again on Google. So, is including the one where officially she's on Blizzard. Like yeah, that she is right-handed in that. Oh, shoot. I unplugged my headphones. Weird. But uh, her... Also, someone earlier said that the sword is similar to what Ivy uses in the um, Soul Calibur games. That's true. That's who oh, I'm thinking of. I That's the one. played Soul Calibur since 2005. That's the one, though. Her sword goes rigid at some point and then out the segments when she's ripping it around people like that's her that's totally her listen i don't want to talk about rigid and stiff swords in regards to the ivy i don't want to know what people are doing out there <laughs> look the the fanfic is strong for the uh <laughs> for that part of the the world i don't know what i'm saying all right Man, play. We, we were th that was just the golden age of pervy ass fighting games oh yeah dude totally and even the new one i mean the new one's dialed back a little bit but because of that character creator you can go you can go to town you can make a you can make a penis, really. Is there a new Soul Calibur? I honestly have no oh, idea. Oh yeah, there, the new Soul Calibur, specifically the PC version, because of the interface, is great because you can you can make anybody. Like it's got a character creator thing that's on par with like oh, I don't even know what to like spore almost. Like in terms of like just taking shapes and making shit out of it, it's crazy. People make John Wick characters in there. Oh, and... I completely forgot about this. Yeah, I remember the the buff ass Pikachu fighter. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. The... Making the rounds. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones. Anyway, check this out. We're doing this now. Hear ye, hear ye. Why, it's the town crier. <laughs> All right, time for the town crier. It's emails. That's what they are. You guys send us your emails. We read them on the show. It's theinstance at gmail.com, theinstance at gmail.com. We got one from Brad who says, hey, Scott, Patrick, and Garrett. Patrick's on vacation still, everybody. That's what they do in France. He's not back until like the 20th, by the way. Is he retired? I don't know how they do this over there. <laughs> and he tells me that this is normal for like everybody everywhere, not just oh. Patrick the podcaster. Like, People who just have regular jobs go, all right, I'm taking my two months off. See you, everyone. I don't know how they do it. And I'm sure right, someone's... Everybody, that's it. I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm moving to Germany. I'm going to the motherland. All right. Is that where is that your uh, your lineage is Germany? My last name is Weinzerl Scott. What do you think? Oh, yeah, duh. What was I thinking? <laughs> well, it could be... That could be like Austrian or something or, you know, I don't know. Do you feel the tendency? Do you feel like you're better than everybody else and that you want to... Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's too soon. That's where you went with it. Yeah, That's I decided to go it. full World War II. All right. Um, anyway, so. Feel the hey. tendency to be very coy about any uh, nationalism and uh, displays of military force. Yes, this is true. Uh, but Bondi Country or whatever in the chat says, yes, the USA is weird. Uh, he's an ex Briton living in the US. I hear this from everybody. They all take their vacations very seriously and they're long and they're very complete vacations. Like it's a huge percentage of their year. And here we're that sounds just, so much better than than how how what, what I just went through, which was feeling guilty about being out of town for. Two yes, months. I do that too. I hate it. Oh my gosh, I hate it. I have a family reunion thing coming to the end of the year or the end of the month, and I'm dreading it. Not because I don't want to see everybody, not because they're not fun or any of that, because I know it's going to pull me away from stuff, and I'm going to feel guilty the whole time. That's that's it. Ah, uh, capitalism. <laughs> Anyway, check this out. He says, a uh, longtime fan of the show. I'm curious what each of your favorite music from World of Warcraft is. My personal favorite is the music from Grizzly Hills, due in no small part to Wrath of the Lich King being my first expansion at max level. Love the show, Brad. So we've talked about this before. Uh, I, I wanted to use this email as a way to also tell people that it's I'm this close to getting Russell uh, back on the show in a post-Blizzard form talk about uh, whatever he wants to talk about, but also talk about what music he's up to and just some of the music and WoW in general. He's still still a thing he can talk about. Uh, so this email gave me that excuse, but also I wanted to uh, kind of tell people what our favorite music is. So my favorite intro music, because I have two categories here. My favorite intro music is the one to see, is called Siege of Worlds from Warlords. It's my favorite thing about Warlords is the intro music, and it sounds like this. 
skip ahead a little so you can get the, the gist of it here. I love that just marchy, freaking angry orc army vibe, and I think they killed it with that. Uh, and that was also a Russell joint. Uh, and then my favorite in-game music, like just sort of ambient, chilling, or chilling out, whatever, is Grizzly Hills. So I'm right there with him. I think Grizzly Hills was uh, a transformative moment in the game for me because when I came over that ridge and saw these rolling green hills and uh, trees and just a very different environment, plus the new draw distance in that expansion was, was an enormous jump, I just was swept up in the music in such a way that now I still think of that music all the time. I'd, I play it here and there. So those are my favorites, Garrett. Do you have do you have favorites? I am very, very partial to, I think it's called the Sindori, is the track for the Blood Elf leveling area. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. I think it's good. called the Sindori. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I really love that. There's a whole lot of cello going on in there, and I'm a sucker for a good string uh, arrangement. <laughs> You're a cello man? Uh, yeah, even though I have no idea how to play one. Um. <laughs> oh, here it is. Let me see if this is the song. I think this is it. Let me skip that. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. That's a really good one too. That 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 music really just that that is like a sense memory. I hear that, and I am a sophomore in college. Ah, oh, that's crazy. I love leveling that one the too. warlock, and and really that like it, I think it's it's part of the reason I have such a fond memory for Burning Crusade. Um, I just oh dude, I love Blood Elf so much, and all the lore going on there. I was so happy when they were added to the game, and even though I didn't take my so when I when I first got BC. Since I wasn't max level, the first thing I did was go and roll a Blood Elf. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time leveling. And then eventually I got a hair up my butt and decided to go back to my Alliance Hunter and finish it up and get to max level. Um, but it came full circle when Kualdanas was released as the final patch. Mm. And over the over a year later, I head out to Kualdanas and I hear that music again. And yeah. it just brought that whole freaking expansion just full circle for me. I think, um, I think I it's, probably, it's, about it's probably fair to say that in, on the whole, Blizzard's World of Warcraft music sort of collection over the years is still like some of the best you'll ever get anywhere, in any any video game and maybe movie for that for that matter. Like the stuff is just so good. It's so cinematic. It sets the tone for every zone you're in, for every fight you do. Like it's just so good. It's still the high water mark, and I don't think anyone's even come close to it. Yep, yep. Uh, the other one is, and this is probably just my favorite of all time, is is Arthas, my son. The arrangement for the cinematic for Wrath oh, of the Lich King. That's very good. It's, it's like, it's like a, just a constant crescendo because it starts so uh, slow and quiet and and beautiful with this undertinge of like horror. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, oh, God, I love it. It's really love good. everything about it. You're really good. You're right there too. Here's one of my favorite of Battle for Azeroth. Uh, this is an ambient theme. It is not is actually not on the um, soundtrack. It's just part of the game. And I captured it out in a very short form because I like it so much. It's just this part where you're out in Zandalari, you're in kind of the swamp areas, and this plays a lot. And it sets the tone for that place in like this like seriously rad way. So I love that. And now oh, I use yeah. that for a sounder all the time. That, that was going down into the swamp from the capital because it has that like really steep descending entrance mm -hmm. you essentially leave the the the, the giant pink pyramid city yeah <laughs> and, and and you're going down and like as the fog rolls in dude like that was awesome yeah like bfa did such a good job with these continents yeah and also just to you know to, to give a shout out to the team i don't i don't necessarily love i think the intro is a little derivative of for this expansion but the content music throughout the BFA content is really great. And it's the first full soundtrack without Russell being there. And I think that just speaks to him leaving such a great footprint and, and those guys who remain are killing it. So keep yeah. it up, keep it up guys. Yeah. Yeah. I think Nazmir is one of my favorite zones in a very, very long time. Yeah. It's really good. You've, you guys have heard, um, Oh, maybe I haven't played it on this show. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. So Bo did a guitar thing for the Invincible. You know, remember the Invincible song, the one about his horse, about Arthas' horse? Yeah, yeah. I think you played that a couple episodes ago. Did I play ago. that? Yeah, it's really good. I should play it at the end of the show, maybe. Just I haven't played the whole thing before. It's really good. Anyway. Do you have an extended outro. 
Yeah, why not? Uh, there you go. There's your there's your email, and it's super easy to send one in. The instance at gmail dot com. Your thoughts, your feelings, your questions, all welcome at the instance at gmail dot com. And that is going to do it for the show. All right, Garrett. Between now and next time we meet, are there any cool things people should be checking out over in your neck of the woods? Uh, yeah, yeah. We just put out a brand new episode of Into the Nexus. So if you want to hear about all the stuff that just hit Heroes of the Storm and kind of wrap your brain around it, the most recent episode will do exactly that. And also, we got a new Angry Chicken coming on Tuesday, uh, where we will be joined by special guest Cora, who is about to not be able to be a guest anymore because she just got hired by Blizzard. Oh my gosh, she's I saw go that. Work. Yeah, saw that. That's yeah, crazy. she's going to go work on Hearthstone's final design team. But uh, she, we we have confirmed with her she's still um, more than allowed to come and uh, guest on the show on Tuesday. Nice. So it'll be our first post Saviors of Oldham launch episode of The Anger Chicken. And Cora will be joining us, and I couldn't be more excited about this. Uh, I, feel a, I feel the tone... Uh, of our interview may shift a little a little bit though given mm. recent events mm, yeah maybe she uh she's interesting because uh, i follow her on twitter and i saw her thing and i got all nervous because it said i'm getting out of the the commentary business or something was the top of her tweet and i went oh no what happened somebody was a jerk or something terrible happened and then it was because i got hired by blizzard and i was like yeah that's awesome oh yeah yeah i was so happy for her. she has gotten so much just crap yeah. Um, from random a holes on the internet that it really really annoys me because i think she was one of the more talented casters i agree and uh i'm really excited to have her on the show on tuesday she deserves uh all good things so i'm excited to hear about that should be a good interview check that out a move.tv for all that and other shows uh, garrett's all up to you can find uh me working real hard hopefully soon you'll get to see the fruition of this but uh i've been working my butt off on a card game that i designed and pretty soon that will be available for people to look at, decide if they want to buy one or not. They'll be cheap. It's a 65 card deck called uh, Rock Runners Incorporated. And um, I don't want to say too much about it, except if you like sci fi and, uh, and cool art, I made a card game and I'm nervous and I'm putting it out there for the whole world. We're not Kickstarter or nothing, just making a card game. And uh, I got a sample. Oh, I don't have it here. I have a sample deck already. It's looking awesome. I think we're just having to do instructions and boxes and, and, we're, and we're done with this damn thing. So keep your eye on uh, the website. I'll have something up soon that will sort of detail the game and let people know where they can get it. That's over at frogpants.com. For everything else you're looking for for this show, do not forget, you can find us at theinstance.net. That is our website, theinstance.net. And between now and next week, send us your emails, uh, theinstance at gmail.com. You can also find uh, Garrett at Garrett Art on Twitter. I'm at Scott Johnson. Patrick's at Not Patrick. You can find more shows like this at frogpants.com. Don't forget to support us on our support system. It's super easy to do and not expensive. And some really rad uh, stuff you get in the mail. You get cool digital rewards. You get a bonus show every month. There's so much more that you can get out of the show if you support us. Over at theinstance.net, you'll see the button right there. We'd love to have you. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Garrett, and for the vacationing Patrick. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Yeah. yeah. We did it. Well.